Shumai Kreiso, hello and welcome to the Bluebird's Nest, episode 63 this week. And I'm really excited to introduce a man that many of you wouldn't have seen before, uh, but he has already played a huge part in our season. It's uh, Will Morgan, founder of Tor Sports. Welcome to the nest, Will. Hi, you right. It's uh, just over two months ago announced that Tor Sports were going to be our new kit supplier for Half West County this season. And I think it all just seems to have snowballed since then. Uh, we, we'll get into those last two months shortly, but let's go back. Uh, find out a bit more about Tor Sports then. So April 2020, I think I've read, that the, right at the start of a pandemic of all times to start a business, but you created your first kit for your own club, Rogerston AFC, of I think it's the Gwent County Premier. Um, t- talk us through it, man, Will. How exactly did it come about? Um, I mean, I, I've always been in charge of um, sourcing kits for the club. I've been there for sort of 10 plus years now. Um, and yes, yeah, so it was due in lockdown. I had a lot of time on my hands. I'd been furloughed. Um, so I just sort of said to the committee, why don't we just try and do something different? I'll, um, I'll reach out to a few places, a few different factories. I'll start sourcing different kits and why don't we just try and do it ourselves? Mm. Um, so that sort of went from there. We, um, spent a few months, obviously we didn't play football for the whole season. So I just spent a few months getting samples in, uh, until we found stuff that was really good quality um and yeah that that was it really so found a good designer found a good factory um started putting it together we sort of announced it as our kit and it was never supposed to go further than that i was just going to use it as a way of us doing something a bit different to everyone else amazing i love that and obviously the rest is history as they say it was from from player and part-time kit designer to business owner in that short space of time I, I watched your interview with Ivan Gwilym for Scorio a few months ago, and yeah. I remember learning you were a qualified civil engineer. I didn't realize, obviously, the furlough had uh, sort of kick-started it all. That's that's some yeah. career change. Fair play uh, for having the courage to have a go at it, for, you know, and yeah. here you are four years on. What does the business look like now, then? What does Tor consist of with regards to staff and your location? I can see you. Uh, it looks like you're in a stock room as it, at the moment. So, um, yeah, we're in an office in the centre of Newport now. Um, it started out in the spare room. Um, we moved out of there quite quickly. Um, but, yeah, we've got full-time staff now, some part-time staff. Uh, it's something we're looking at. Um, we need to sort of grow that for next year. So we've kept up with the demand. We've had a busy year, but we knew we'd have a busy year, and, and we've managed to deal with it. But the plan is just to keep growing. So um yeah one of the areas identified to help with that is to get more staff on board so when tends to get quieter sort of just after christmas so i think january to april we'll be doing a bit of a recruitment drive trying to get a few more people on board for for next summer amazing and i gotta ask are you the the creative brain designing all of these kits um i have input but in terms of actual design work uh i i sort of very limited in what i can do i can just <laughs> Just about work myself around Photoshop, but other than that, um, no. So uh, we, we use a few designers or freelance designers. Um, we tend to ask clubs for a brief of what they want. So some people are really specific, really detailed, uh, and some people will just say it's a blank canvas. Um, you know, we trust you guys to, to make something good. So, um, yeah, the brief varies massively across clubs. Mm. Um, and, yeah, sort of. Based on the brief, I tend to sort of pick the design who I think is best suited to that, and then we go from there. Amazing. Go, going back to that Scorio video, I, I completely agree with what Ivan said. You know, dream job that being a kit designer. So that that would be the line of work I'd be looking for. I, yeah. I remember spending hours as a youngster drawing kits and things like that when I should have been concentrating in classes. Um, but yeah, that that video really showcased the the wide range of kits you've already put out across Wales and probably. Uh, the wider world as well. But I think up until ours was released anyway, the, the Kylie Leon, I think it won, the, the Wales like one, similar to the, the shirt behind yeah. me, and similar to this Gary Speed one I've got. That I love that one. I really like that. But um I think the one I was probably the most familiar with was the uh, the Bocca Junior style Sclodion Clantwit major one because it that got you some really good traction and, and engagement online, I think. And They've had a few. I know they've had a few different uh, quirky kits coming out, but the Pascod one as well, that got featured. Was it over in the States? Somebody picked it up on telly over there. 
It was on CBS. It was on it a few times actually. Yeah. Fantastic. So how did they get to learn about that? I've got no idea. I don't really know how it came about. Um, I don't know how they saw it, but uh, yeah, they interviewed uh, Jack Lantwitz, goalkeeper, on there. Um, I think that the first feature was actually on the dinosaur goalkeeper kit, and then we released the Puss God kit maybe a week or two after, and they picked that story <laughs> up as well. Amazing. So I'm assuming, is that a sponsorship of a fish and chip shop or something then, is it? Yeah, they've been sponsored by their local fish and chip shop. Yeah, yeah. that's fantastic. <laughs> How you can be so niche and, and custom design, obviously. But um, I've spent a good bit of time browsing the Tor website recently. And I've got to say, again, it's a Lantwit reference. Yeah, I love what you've done with regards to their new charity shirt too. Uh, yeah. I couldn't not raise awareness of this during the chat. It's a... Uh, Unfortunately, it's a heartbreaking story of, of baby Evelyn, whose memory lives on. And her, her parents, uh, Cherry and Jim, I think it is, have set up adventures with Mr. Octopus. Mm-hmm. I went down a bit of a rabbit hole and found out uh, through, through their Facebook page about how they're knitting octopuses and, and are selling them across the country, raising funds for Tea Havan and um, the Ronald McDonald charity. Um, and Flantwit have obviously got involved. And their new octopus theme shirt... I think proceeds are going to be donated to uh, the charity there. So excellent. Well, firstly, I must say excellent to you and Clantwit for the gesture. But you must be quite proud to have played a part in this one. Yeah, I mean, um, sort of the the idea was all on Twitter. So can't take any credit for it, but um, you know, we give clubs a kickback on sales of of any shirt. So, um, you know, we're here to be used as a tool mm. for anything like that. So when you know when they suggested the idea, we were completely on board for it. Um, you know, it's a nice, fun shirt as well, which sort of yeah. hopefully will help generate a few more sales to help the cause. Fantastic. Yeah, I love seeing, you know, when the football community comes together to do such, you know, uh, inspiring off-field work like this, it's excellent. Yeah. So if anyone would like to support the adventures with Mr. Octopus, please visit their Facebook page too. I think um, I'll have to get an octopus to come on this season's adventures with our West County perhaps uh, to go across Wales and uh, whoever, well, wherever else we end up this year. But let's come on to Half for West County then. Uh, exciting exciting partnership that's kicked off. We've had two kit launches of our own since the announcement in, in early June. Um, both have gone down really well with supporters, I must say, and the wider world. We've had uh, lots of tweets coming in from some big uh, kit-loving uh, accounts, particularly on, on Twitter, etc. Um, we've had some really good feedback from opposition fans too and people inquiring about, you know, our partnership, etc. So hopefully more to come, like you say, and, and your brand will grow again. Um, let's, let's look at the uh, the home shirt in particular then to start. What's the story? You know, how does it come to fruition? This obviously the, the bluebird in the pattern and the, the Pembrokeshire flag colour so prominent. Where did the idea come from? Well, um, so we had quite a detailed brief from you guys of, of what you were looking for in a home and away shirt. Um, Pembership flag was brought up quite early on. Um, and then we were given sort of a few ideas on what to integrate in the shirt, but the bluebird was brought up sort of time and time again. Um, so yeah, we, we wanted to look at sort of Pembrokeshire as a whole and sort of the influences around the area. Um so we thought maybe sort of a stained glass design in reference to sort of the churches and castles around the area would be quite a good uh, a good thing to do. So, yeah, we're really pleased with how it's come out. Definitely. Yeah, like I said, uh, we're uh, getting lots of good feedback on that one. You mentioned that the away shirt as well. It pays homage, obviously, to the history of Pembrokeshire, you know, the castles, the churches and the cathedral that many of us have visited across the county um, that have given us those sort of custom design tiles that are in the black of that shirt and obviously the the flag of St David's too and I think it's really nice that the ethos of that shirt is that you know we're representing the county whilst on our travels across the season and and people are very much getting on board now with our club motto of of playing for Pembrokeshire you know it it really embodies that have you had many orders of the shirts then yeah they sold quite well um the pre-orders they've actually arrived um yesterday so the guys are upstairs um, sort of pressing names, pressing on the patches and, and getting them shipped out. So anyone who's pre-ordered, sort of, as we record this, they're all just... <laughs> so. Excellent. Excellent. Love that. And I think a bit of a, a Bluebird's Nest exclusive of sorts now, unless anybody's been eagle-eyed on the website. 
not only are the replica shirts available on the tour site, we've now got the first few items of the leisure wear that are available to pre-order. Yeah. Um, please do visit the club shop to order your hats, your scarves, and one of these new uh, home and away themed T-shirts, I suppose. I love them. Hopefully, I'll have to get one uh, on a future podcast recording myself, I think. But i, I got to say, the, the off-field clothing, you know, the hoodie I'm in today, uh, the sweater, the quarter zip, this superb quality. And you've really done your your research to to get in the the, the level of uh, kit to come in. The shorts having zips, the travel shorts having zips is such a, a simple um, add-on, but so, so popular with the boys, you know, when we're on our travels and that. And, and even the trousers, great fit of the trousers. I remember a couple of years ago, we had the most horrendous fitting uh, tracksuit bottoms. I won't mention the brand, but yeah, a good number of years ago. So mm-hmm. to see these sort of really nice fitting clothing is spot on. Those are available on the site time too. If somebody was to order with you today, Will, what's the sort of turnaround time? So um, anything ordered through the club shop, uh, we ask for up to two weeks. So it's, it's peak season at the moment. It's the busiest time of the year. So we're, we're using the full two weeks, but we're getting things out in two weeks. Um, once we get through this, sort of October, November, you'll be looking probably a few days until we get things sent out. But yeah, if anything needs personalization, so name, number, initials, or even just your quest stitched on there, mm. we, we'll need up to two weeks to get it out at the moment. Excellent. Well, hopefully the orders start flooding through for some of those with you. Um, if there are any other clubs listening to this and are p- potentially considering reaching out to start their own partnership with you, obviously you mentioned they, they can come with a complete design ready for you or just colours or whatever it is. That's, like, as I said, such a niche way of doing it and completely bespoke partnerships. What's the best way for them to, um, to approach you then? Uh, so... Any social media page, drop us a message on there. Um, you can go on our website. We've got a contact us page. You can fill in the form and that email goes straight to me. Um, or you could just email contact at tor-sports.co.uk. Uh, and again, I'll see that email as well. So um, anything like that, I'll pick it up and I'll get straight back in touch with you. Brilliant. Excellent. I'm sure you'll uh, be flooded with the inbox there. Uh, no doubt. But as I said, we've discussed the the opportunity to come with you for that bespoke partnership. You know, you see so many off the shelf designs these days, perhaps that are people are leaning away from and having that custom experience. But mm. matters on the field now. Then for both of us, I'll mention our upcoming fixtures. We are still undefeated in both kits, and long may it continue on our home and away form. Four clean sheets from five games, three wins and two draws. Um, really proud and it's the best ever start to a Cymru Premier season uh, for the Bluebirds and it sees us joint top of the league but a little obstacle in front of us this weekend Europa Conference League participants TNS our visitors Craig Harrison's men come into our temporary home in Carmarthen this weekend at the LHP Stadium uh, so please do join us cheer the boys on uh, at 2.30 this Saturday but said earlier about your own playing time have you, are you still involved with Rochester? Yeah, I'm still playing. I'm still clinging on to a spot. <laughs> <laughs> who, who have you got this weekend? Uh, we were playing Wattsville on the weekend. Uh, so they're sort of just up the road. They're another club I, I work with, actually. That's quite right. a common occurrence now. So I've got yeah, a bit was... on the pitch. But <laughs> yeah, it's, um, yeah, we're doing quite well this season. We've had an OK start, hoping for a promotion push. But it's a competitive league, so we'll see. Amazing. Two questions have come up from what you just said there now. Playing opponents who are in your kits then, yeah. th- that must be quite surreal. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I've had to change the way I play a little bit. <laughs> 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 no, to be honest, it's, it's, it's my favourite bit about doing what I do. Um, I'm really passionate about my club. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the people that I tend to deal with are the people who... You know, they do the kit wash, they sort the kit out, you know, they're, they're the volunteers that seem to do absolutely everything. And I can completely sympathise with that. Um, so I speak to like, like-minded like people all the time. Um, and, you know, sort of, I because I sympathise with them and I understand their struggles, I, th- I think maybe it helps me with helping them a little bit. Um, yeah, it's good. I sort of Love seem that. to deal with most teams. Most teams. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, I've been keeping an eye on the Cymru football app to see how many times... Well, your, your uh, disciplinary record's probably got a lot better over the last few years. 
Yeah, I scored um I scored a goal two weeks ago for the first time in about three years. <laughs> was that like against the customers team? Um yeah, it was actually. Um really? but I had I had about 20 messages when I got back in the changing room from people who had noticed. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. You mentioned there you're looking to have a good season then. So where would a promotion take you? What league would you go into then? That would take us into the um, into the Cymru Leagues. It would take us into uh, Tier 3. Okay. So um, we've just got a new pitch. We spent about a year sort of doing it up. We'll play on it for the first time next week. Um, but that sort of hits all the criteria now. So we finished fourth last year. So the plan is to push on, but it's, it's a tough league. We'll see. Excellent. I'm sure you'll pick up a few uh, Pembrokeshire supporters along the way now. It's always great to, to keep an eye on to clubs that are linked with the club in some some way. So, yeah, yeah. up just then. <laughs> um, best of luck with it all. You know, you've got so much going on. I'm really looking forward to seeing this partnership flourish now, particularly over the next few months where there may or may not be a few uh, surprises along the way as it's a, a real celebration season for us. Uh, with the anniversary and everything, but yeah, best of luck with it all. Thank you so much for joining me. Well, I, I know you're you're flat out in the in the office there today, and I'll I'll leave you uh, get back to it all. But yeah, catch you catch you soon at uh, maybe a fixture or so. <laughs> nice one. Thank, Thank you. Much. Cheers.